welcome back everyone uh, we'll be starting the ses uh, session now we'll take question number 16 that is new adjuvant therapy before reoperation for incidental uh, gallbladder cancer i would like to invite the chairpersons dr lalit mohan sharma sir who is senior consultant hematologist and medical oncologist at the department of medical oncology srcc mahatma gandhi hospital rajasthan and saurabh kalya sir who is senior consultant uh, department of Surgi surgical gastroenterology ck billa hospital jaipur welcome sir so very good morning once again and uh, next session is on the new adjuvant therapy in uh, gallbladder cancer. And to deliver this talk, may I request Dr. Safalta. Dr. Safalta, she is senior consultant in the Department of Medical Oncology and Cellular Therapy at Amrita Hospitals in Faridabad. Welcome to you. Good morning to all and thank you, Dr. Kapoor, for giving me opportunity to express my views in such an important meeting. I am presenting few slides of Dr. Piyush Vashne, who has some family emergency. Uh, we'll discuss about the new adjuvant therapy in patients of incidental gallbladder carcinoma. So we all know for India, it's the most common bilirubin tract cancer and contributes 10% of the global uh, GBC burden. Incidental gallbladder carcinoma, it has 0.3 to 1.5% of all the cholecystectomies done. And we all know it depends like 20%, depending on the stage, it can be 20%, 50%, 100% of the patients who have in a residual disease after initial cholecystectomy. So renal section, yes, we have discussed it in, in vast in previous uh, sessions. But do we have an all non-operative management? So GBC, as we all know, has strong predisposition for peritoneal seedings. And when the gallbladder, uh, as such, when the resection is done, presuming it's a benign uh, gallbladder disease, then there must be a violation of serosal plane during cholecystectomy, and which may lead to dissemination of the cells. So theoretically, it negates the benefit of re-resection. But then, despite of that, the re-resection has been associated with improved oncological outcomes. In a French study, five-year OS was 41% uh, for the patients who had underwent re-resection and 15% who underwent who did not underwent re-resection. There are multiple uh, single institutes and uh, multicentric trial from the Japan, Europe, US that that has observed that re-resection is beneficial and it is, has given oral survival advantage. Median OS of 26 months in patient who have undergone re-resection and five-year OS of 35 to 42 percent. So this is the study which was in, in previously quoted as well, that is um, uh, from Netherlands. 110 patients, they underwent re-resection. And uh, out of 432, and here we can see that the patient who underwent re-resection, they have median OS of 52.6 months versus 13.7 months in the patient who did not. And you can see how beautifully the curves are separating. But here you also see that the patient who had T2 uh, disease, the re-resection really helped, while the patient who had 3, 3 disease, it did not. And the patient, definitely, it is understandable, the patient who had re-resection and again there is a residual disease, then outcome is inferior. So the T1A, uh, as such, it has been discussed, so I'll skip this slide. So currently, what is being followed is, if there is no residual disease, then no residual disease on investigation, then it is revision radical cholecystectomy. If there is residual disease, people do tend to treat it as a locally advanced gallbladder carcinoma. But why MACT, that is new adjuvant chemotherapy, immediately treats the micrometastatic disease, Optimize patient selection for surgery for curative intent resection. Allows in vivo assessment of chemosensitivity that can guide future management. Downstaging uh, primary tumor. Favors uh, treatment compliances already given in other GI malignancies. As we see that uh, there is level one uh, evidence for resectable gastric cancer, borderline resectable pancreatic malignancy. And we also know that GBC is also having this pr predisposition of micrometastatic disease. It has the same poor prognosis as these malignancies are. It is also having an early recurrence. It also has a distant recurrence. And based on these experiences, can't we try a new adjuvant approach for gallbladder carcinoma patients? And that can be considered in high risk for early distant recurrence. So what are the criteria for successful NACT? That is, to assess the tumor biology, and we should know who to be given so that we can minimize the toxicity and what should be the effective chemotherapy regime. So patient selection is the key. 
important to select patients who are likely to benefit with the joint chemotherapy and so that because if we use it indiscriminately in low risk patient, it will impair the functional status, delay surgery, make surgical intervention riskier and compromise the surgical candidacy. So who are the risk, high risk patients? We have already discussed and in fact the patient who have higher risk of micrometastatic disease, advanced T stage, more positive patient who are having residual disease, hepatic versus peritoneal location of the disease. For T from a TMH study, it has shown that the patient who are having locally advanced or borderline resectable GVC, it has shown a good response on neoadjuvant chemotherapy. And it also helps in uh, identifying the high risk patients. So what was the TMH criteria? Here we can see the uh, nodal station, what they have mentioned is hepatic artery, station 8, hepatic radial ligament, and retroperencreatic and retro, uh, retrodinal stay. And the size of the tube, uh, node should be more than 1 centimeter in short axis, round in shape, and heterogeneous enhancement on CT or PET CT scan. And for incidental gallbladder, it is any residual disease, recurrent mass in GB and liver uh, bed, and one node as per nodal criteria, and if there is involvement of bile duct causing obstructive jaundice. Now coming to the those new adjoint chemotherapy studies, there are very few retrospective and usually the management is extrapolated from the gallbladder carcinoma. So from where we got this region that is GEMSIS, it is from the ABC02 study and which has shown an overall survival benefit because in this study also locally advanced gallbladder carcinomas were included and gallbladder uh, carcinoma patients were 149 in this study. Coming to the retrospective studies on incidental gallbladder carcinoma. So this is also from TMH in which they have analyzed 160 patients in which new adjuvant chemotherapy has given. They also included incidental gallbladder carcinoma patients with, but we don't know the exact number in this paper. And those patients who had high risk disease, that is the TMH criteria which I have already mentioned. Here we can see that these patients, all the patients in 160 patients, the response rates were 50%. And 66, that is 41 percent could undergo curative intent resection and R0 resection was done in 63. Out of 66 patients, R0 was in 63 patients. And here we can see that the patient who underwent this curative resection surgery, the OS was 49 months versus 7 months. EFS was 25 months. So definitely neoadjuvant chemotherapy has really helped in these patients. Another study from MSK. Their um, uh, data was of 74 patients, out of which 25 patients were of incidental gallbladder. And 25 years, they had shown a decrease, uh, a disease progression. 50% had stable disease and 25% had partial response. The definitive R0 resection was just 14%, and these 14% patients have shown an OS of 51 months, as compared to 11 months in rest of the patient. Another study which was already being quoted uh, in the previous presentation in which incident 517 uh, patients of incidental gallbladder were analyzed. Here we can see that the pa there was about 135 patients, <coughs> they received new adjuvant treatment. And the patients who receive new adjuvant treatment has superior OS when operated after new adjuvant therapy uh, as compared to the uh, locally advanced disease patient who did not underwent new adjuvant therapy. The uh, three year OS was 60% versus 32.3%. So there are some smaller series from TMH and from Japan who had shown some fewer, about 60% response rate and in Japanese study the response rate were lower. But there is some other perspective as well. This is a systematic review which was published from Kashmir and uh, they uh, analyzed six published studies of 420 uh, GVC patients. And they have seen that 30% of the patient had disease progression despite of new adjuvant chemotherapy. 67.3% patient, yes, they show good response to chemotherapy, but just one third underwent curative surgery. So yes, the OS is better in these patients, but only one third of the patient actually benefited from the GPC. So we also agree that or not all patients will benefit from the NSAT, and we will have to find out those patients who actually get benefit with the annual joint chemotherapy. This is an ongoing trial from Germany, that is a GAIN trial, and they are doing it on a new incidental gallbladder carcinoma patients. That is, they are giving uh, to locally advanced, new, uh, locally advanced incidental gallbladder patients a perioperative chemotherapy, that is three cycles of GEMSIS, then surgery, and followed by that three cycles of GEMSIS. And uh, 
uh, which is compared by uh, a front surgery, that is radio section followed by whatever the investigator has uh, planned for. The inclusion criteria is if it is node negative then T2, T3 and if it is node positive then T1 to T3 patients will be included. The primary endpoint is uh, OS and we will be getting the results soon, they have suggested like 2025. Now, role, any role of NACTRT, as such we don't have any data on NACTRT in GBC or uh, incidental gallbladder carcinoma. Ming Ma et al has analyzed some, uh, patient, had done some meta-analysis and it has shown that the patient who received adjunct chemotherapy had better OS than patient who received CTRT or RT. Polka GB study that is also ongoing in TMH and this is a phase three randomized trial which is uh, evaluating perioperative chemotherapy versus NACTRT in locally advanced GBC patients. So this will help us in uh, further extrapolating or defining its role in incidental gallbladder carcinoma. For how long to be given emergent chemotherapy? ABC02 study, it has given three to four cycles. Gain trial is given three cycles. So three to four cycles of chemotherapy can be given to any of the patient who are actually fulfilling the high risk criteria. So, consistent statement uh, from our side is literature for new adjunct chemotherapy in IGVC is scarce and yet to be validated. Incidental gallbladder cancers, they usually present in early stage and but should be benefited most with the radio section. The certain patients of IGVC, they are beyond T2 and have no positivity, we should consider for uh, them for new adjunct chemotherapy as well as the patient who are uh, uh, benefiting, uh, are in the high risk criteria from the TMH. So, However, there is a subpar response of NACT raises a possibility of local progression of unresectability and chemotherapy side effects can worsen the functional status. So we have to select the best treatment plan according to the patient and the risk the patient has. A gain trial may help to better define the management. Till that time, we suggest that T3 and N positive nodes can be given new adjunct therapy, recurrent mass or there is a residual mass in the GB or liver disease, N1 node as per nodal criteria or the patient who is having involvement of bile duct causing obstructive jaundice can be given new adjunct chemotherapy. This will uh, help us understanding the tumor biology, downsizing the tumor, uh, tumor, eliminating the micrometastasis, taking care of intraoperative events like gall gallbladder perforation with bile spillage during dissection. Thank you. That's all from my side. Thank you, Dr. Safalta, for such a nice talk. Actually, this is a very um, debatable topic. Uh, still, NCCN does not have a clear gui guideline that near joint therapy should be given. But uh, for surgeons as uh, like me, uh, we would like to resect if it is possibly to do a R0 resection. Uh, obviously, when you see a residual disease, patient has been operated somewhere else, and we need to see the tumor biology if the tumor is already spread, micrometastasis may be there. So giving some time to the patient while giving chemotherapy, we can see if the patient will uh, justify the big surgery. So um, uh, if uh, the trials that are going on will come up with better drugs or uh, with <coughs> will time will tell actually if new adjunct therapy will uh, be very important in this type of tumors. So, yeah, we'll, yeah, thank you. Congratulations again for Dr. Kapoor and the team on uh, this incredible meeting uh, that we wish we next time hopefully we'll join in person. Again, also, congratulations for Dr. Vashni and Dr. Bagmar on excellent work in regard to new adjuvant uh, treatment for gallbladder adenocarcinoma. Uh, this is Ghassan Abu Alfa from Memorial Sloan Catering Cancer Center in New York. Uh, superb subject and very important, uh, understandably for India, but uh, globally too. Uh, gallbladder cancer, after all, uh, you know, is an issue that comes along because of a concern about a direct extension into the liver and the adjacent organs, including the lymph nodes. Why is that? Because as we heard, the uh, thin wall of the gallbladder a narrow lamina propria, and of course a single muscle layer, and as such. And very important to define the word new adjuvant. This is not conversion therapy. This is a 
disease that already is amenable for resection. We're not trying to convert it to become resectable, but the question is, can we give some therapy beforehand and then proceed with therapy afterwards, uh, with, with the surgery afterwards? By all means, we can and we should. Uh, however, clinical trials are needed for that purpose. Many of them are ongoing. Uh, proudly, many of them are in India. Others are throughout the world. But sadly, collaboration is not there. And if anything, it will be very important to join in hands in hand to be able to gather the best information that we come out with in regard to how to best treat the patients with gold bladder adenocarcinoma. And of course, this brings up the question of incidental because no doubt that uh, many of our colleagues, not necessarily in the cancer domain, being surgeons or oncologists, are involved in the care of a incident called mass. And the question is, how can we pass on the information for all our colleagues to make sure that whenever you feel, smell, or see a potential gold carcinoma, just close the patient and make sure that it gets to the uh, correct experts for a potential new adjuvant therapy followed by an appropriate resection, which includes, of course, the gold bladder, as well as the segments, uh, uh, affect, potentially affect the segments of the liver segment for it, five positive notes. Uh, how should we do that? We should really first do a joint trial throughout the world, and number two is uh, devise the teaching uh, venues to ensure that our colleagues will do what's right for our patients with gold bladder and carcinoma. I thank you again, and hopefully and we'll have a continued great meeting, and uh, thanks for the invitation. Thank you. Uh, next is Dr. Milin Javediji online. Most of them it's very early in the month. Yes. Kapoor, for first holding this meeting every year, it's certainly a labor of love. And second, also for inviting me to give this introduction on the case for neoadjuvant therapy for incidental gallbladder cancer. My name is Milin Javle from MD Anderson Cancer Center. So gallbladder cancer is a rare disease of the West. It is estimated between seven to 9,000 patients are diagnosed every year in the US, certainly more in Chile, Japan, India. And uh, majority of the patients are diagnosed incidentally in the US at the time of cholecystectomy, which is different, I know, from what we find in India. And 30 to 50% may present with advanced stage of disease. In fact, the cancer is discovered in about 150 to 200 cholecystectomy specimens, one in every 150 to 200 specimens, and is associated with a relatively poor survival. The prognosis following surgery has improved, but it certainly depends on the extent of surgery and now perhaps the administration of adjuvant therapy. So we know that patients who have uh, incidental gallbladder cancer undergo, who undergo re-resection have a better survival as compared with those that do not undergo uh, re-resection. And the table here uh, shows the survival, one year, three year, and five year survival after re-resection as compared with those that underwent just simple cholecystectomy. And the prognosis after and the re-resection is T-stage dependent. So certainly if it is T1B, T2, T3, or T4, uh, the likelihood of uh, uh, recurrence and uh, poor prognosis is going to increase proportionately so uh, with the T stage of the disease. So therefore, uh, in, a, in the consensus guidelines that uh, I was a part of, patients who were, who were incidentally diagnosed with T1B, T2, and T3 disease at the time of simple cholecystectomy should undergo re-resection unless this is some, there is a contraindication, for instance, with poor performance status or advanced stage of disease. In this case, uh, the likelihood of recurrence uh, is higher if there's a residual disease at the time of uh, re-resection. And this table here shows the likelihood of re re residual disease depends on the T stage of the tumor uh, with a higher likelihood with T2 and T3 as compared with T1A and T2, uh, T1B disease. So uh, the incidence of the presence of uh, Residual disease also corresponds with prognosis. So if you have, this table shows that the comparison of disease-free survival 
uh, with or without residual disease, clearly patients that have residual disease uh, in the presence of say T2 uh, tumors or T3 tumors or T1B tumors will have a worse survival as uh, in comparison with the corresponding stages without residual disease. So this is therefore the uh, rationale for new adjuvant therapy. In this setting, it decreases the incidence of uh, residual disease, it improves resectability, improves patient's selection for re-resection and improves survival. So such a study is um, going on in the United States by the ECOG group led by my surgical colleague, Dr. Methel, where patients who are diagnosed in, uh, with incidental gallbladder cancer uh, undergo re-resection, but they are randomized to either uh, surgery upfront or re-resection upfront versus a course of new adjuvant chemotherapy with gemcitabine and cisplatin. And then these patients also get adjuvant therapy as, as standard of care post re-resection. So this study will then establish the value of new adjuvant therapy prior to re-resection. I want to add here that in the, in the days of targeted therapy, immunotherapy, this paradigm is likely to change as we're going to have more effective therapies uh, than gemcitabine and cisplatin. So again, I look forward to the discussion that follows, and I want to thank Dr. Kapoor again for his efforts. So uh, now the forum is open for any comments and discussions. So before we take uh, questions and comments, let us summarize that uh, the best treatment for GB cancer is surgery. Patients who are ineligible for surgery or borderline resectable or patients who have not undergone adequate surgical resection, they are the candidates for new adjuvant chemotherapy where revision surgery is to be considered. So it is not the palliative intent, it is the new adjuvant therapy where we expect that this patient has potentially a curative intent of chemotherapy. As mentioned that in patients who have not been adequately uh, surgically resected, the new adjuvant chemotherapy, gemcitabine, cisplatin has been backbone that after three cycles or so, we do a reassessment, revision surgery, followed by three more cycles. So gemcitabine, cisplatin, 5-fluorouracil, these are the major backbone of the, cancer, uh, the gallbladder cancer chemotherapy. So with this brief uh, sum up, may I request the surgeons to have any questions, comments, queries? How many of you believe that new adjuvant chemotherapy is is good for gallbladder cancer. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you. I am so happy that I was feeling that no surgeon ever believes chemotherapy. They believe only in cutting and surgical I'm surprised that What probably, and, and this is where uh, I would again request the group, because you are looking after this question, to generate a statement uh, which could say something like this, that if for whatever reason you are waiting, it could be disease related, so high risk cases, advanced cases, where you want to see the biology, bile spill. Um, if you want to follow one of the publications which say that four to eight weeks or four to 12 weeks is better, then probably the patient should receive the benefit of neoadjuvant therapy. Now, only problem is that because it is not the standard of care, whether it would be right for us to say that while you are waiting, you should receive chemotherapy. So that I think we need more input from the, uh, the medical oncology group, how to frame it, how to frame the statement. And, uh, but definitely advanced disease, bile spill. Uh, yeah, I, I would say these two conditions. Uh, and or if you want to include, if, if we have a detailed histology report, which is talking of uh, grade of differentiation, lymphovascular invasion, and all those things. So, poor predictors of outcome, uh, one option could be that you give neoadjuvant treatment, the protocol which Dr. Milling Jarle showed. High risk, uh, GB uh, yeah, <laughs> high risk for uh, recurrence, uh, then probably we should. So, we will have to see how we frame the statement. And then, as uh, during the tea time also, most many of us discussed, that uh, for each question, the, the first authors will have to generate a, a brief statement, which will then be circulated to all the experts to have a Delphi kind of a consensus. So yes. As such, we don't have the results of randomized trials, so if the consensus statement will be to be considered, should be considered, sort of thing. Yeah. Yes. 
uh, how do we define locally advanced cancer in the publication? I think we have to really go through, okay. <laughs> Many of the publication beyond cystic node is considered as locally advanced, beyond T1 or very early disease is considered locally advanced. So we have to take in that context. These are resectable disease. So even if the title changes by neoadjuvant therapy in resectable disease, we can't tell that these are unresectable disease. Okay, I think in Tata publication also, portal lymph nodes are considered as locally advanced. Correct? Any, any second stage is locally advanced. So, yeah, so uh, these are inresectable cancers. So there is a huge difference when we uh, make somebody to understand locally advanced and giving neoadjuvant therapy in otherwise resectable cancer. So a significant number of patients in these publications are otherwise surgically resectable cancers and not gone beyond the, th beyond the at least the second basin of lymph nodes. So that, has, that point has to be very, very clear before we tell uh, the locally advanced. Uh, now, what I'm trying to tell is, can we, uh, can we produce a R0 mark in the T front majority very well? Can we uh, go to the next uh, uh, echelon of lymph nodes and produce a negativity in the lymph node basin very well? So majority of the patient, we can do it. So this is different from CA rectum where CA rectum, we have a standardized lymphadenectomy protocol, go to the IMA, completely cylindric excision, then we are talking about neurogen therapy. Here, this, base, this is a different uh, uh, discussion also. So, simply putting a uh, locally advanced and neoadjuvant probably a little bit uh, problematic, I feel. But I don't see an, any uh, uh, harm or anything uh, which would be within inverted comma unethical because in so many other malignancies which are primarily resectable but based on biological parameters, we are saying that we would give neoadjuvant treatment to assess the biology. It has, it has become an established method of treatment in so many other cancers. So there is no harm in saying that in high risk incidental gallbladder cancer, where chances of dissemination are high, instead of offering surgery and having a poor outcome, you give neoadjuvant treatment for three months, see the course of the disease and those who still remain non-metastatic, then you offer surgery. That I agree, sir. That is what exactly I'm telling. So even in resectable, so there is a significant, yeah. Th that we have to, that point has to really come out that these are resectable group we are trying neurogen therapy because of the biological agreement. That. So because you are not in consensus with the timing, that is one thing. Second thing, referrals are different. So in the terms of trials as such, if not as the statement that you have to form is for IGBC and not as a locally advanced and all. For IGBC predominantly, not all will be actually locally advanced. A lot of them will be actually, but another problem which you have to see is the presence of residual disease, which we say is the poor predictor. So four or five criteria we will have to formulate. These are the patients which will probably benefit, then look them as a prospective trial vis-a-vis -vis, uh, upfront surgery versus a new adjuvant, and then formulate. So the statement should be something like that, because it can still be only in terms of trials only. We don't have any evidence, even for neoadjuvant in general GBC, the data is huge. For most of them are observational studies. You cannot have a level one evidence in those cases also. So all first authors, please make a note that you have to generate a statement for your question and you have to suggest future clinical trials related to that question. As a convener of multi-specialty tumor board at State Cancer Institute, I have seen our medical oncologist colleagues are giving immunotherapy and I have seen complete response in locally advanced gallbladder cancer. Will you throw light on that? I think that is a very important uh, tool like uh, the immunotherapy is now approved in almost 13, 14 types of cancers. Gallbladder yet has not been well explored, but the NCCN suggests durvalumab is an uh, immunotherapy which is approved in high-risk patient and uh, without in fact PDL one testing also this is approved and occasionally we are seeing patients who show a complete response also. Yes, so occasionally but yet the biomarker exactly to identify which subset of patient will be showing response to immunotherapy is yet not very clear. 
So PDL1 is one testing, tumor mutation burden is another <coughs> testing. And other than the tumor infiltrating lymphocytes in the pathology specimen, that remains one important factor. Neutrophil lymphocyte ratio in the blood also remains one factor. But yet not the very good predictor for response of immunotherapy is not available. Sir, uh, the role of immunotherapy in gallbladder carcinoma, it is in a metastatic setting. It's not uh, like in a neoadjuvant setting right now. So uh, in this setting, when we are talking about neoadjuvant chemotherapy, we don't have any role of uh, immunotherapy. Yes, sir. Uh, that is totally different scenario. So the debate is still <laughs> going on. So, <laughs> sir, actually the tumor progression on the chemotherapy is still, uh, that is there. and. The chemotherapy drugs, new drugs should uh, improve that uh, uh, recovery, like response rate. If it's very high, then obviously it will come into the picture. Otherwise, still on the trial basis, we should uh, proceed. Yes, I think so. The everyone should include in a clinical trial for these kind of patients and then proceed. I think the major fear factor for surgeons is that the disease may progress while patient is receiving chemotherapy in a resectable disease. But in fact, if we see that if the patient who is on chemotherapy, operable disease, if that person progresses on chemotherapy, which is like 30 percent of chances, then this person will show resp the progression of disease immediately after surgery also. So the disease biology is bad, so we get an opportunity to know the biology of disease also by giving them new adjuvant chemotherapy. There are various other markers, molecular markers like FGFR, HER2, EGFR, RAS mutation, all those are there and now new adjuvant immunotherapy based on the molecular profile of the specimen is being tested. So tomorrow, in fact, in next few meetings, we may see new adjuvant immunotherapy also coming in a big way, which will give probably better answer, better results. Sir, in topaz, you mean the smoke was there, Yes, sir. In topaz, it was college. They had few proportions. Like, uh, so we recently published a um, study, which is a phase two trial on the use of trastuzumab in HER2 positive, uh, but this is again, metastatic uh, biliary tract cancer. And 96% of the patients have been gallbladder cancer, which have shown uh, survival advantage. But again, if we have to extrapolate that to neoadjuvant, we cannot do it uh, without a trial setting. Since we have a couple of medical oncologists here, Dr. Javle has been asking me for a long time that you should make it, because the, the uh, uh, role of HER2 receptor in gallbladder cancer, there are enough publications, and it would not be difficult to get ethics committee approval that you do an immunohistochemistry for HER2, and if it is positive, give uh, HER2 blockage, yeah. along with chemotherapy, and if you have enough numbers, randomize them, one group chemotherapy alone, other chemotherapy with HER2, and in fact, there are few publications now on so this is recently published, JCO pu publication just last month on, uh, it's called the TAP to study. So I think uh, some of you probably should take that. Uh, that is very good suggestion about the HER2 and EGFR both in fact. HER2, like other than breast also we are using in the colon and sometimes in stomach also. So again, same model and it's very good suggestion. Thank you, sir. Actually, we have data on trastuzumab and Fesgo's uh, study is also there. My pathway, which has a basket trial. And then there is also data on trastuzumab, derocytokine on this HER2. So uh, like we have a patient who has operated, then uh, adjuvant chemotherapy was given, and then he metastasized, and HER2 positive was there, and we have started on trastuzumab. So it's a new setup. We are coming up with these patients now. In fact, most of the drugs, they start like that, only coming initially in the metastasis setting, and gradually they come in new adjuvant. Thank you everyone, thank you Kapoor sir for the opportunity and thank you all the participants, thank you.